Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a book review, specifically the Edith Ryder Wilhelm Heckel book. Now this book specifically charts the development of the German Heckel bassoon, but it also charts the development of the contrabassoon at the Heckel factory. Because this is a family business and it is passed down through generation and the book is written by an actual family member, you do get a strong tone of as if you're being told by grandma the history of the company. Specifically, you will hear about grandma grandma's great cooking and also about the knitting that she would do for any woman that would come into the factory. Now this is also important because they do note that famous composers visited and worked with the Heckel Company such as Wagner, Strauss, and Hindemith. Now this book I found also answered three very important questions like why they didn't start numbering bassoons until 3000 series. This is in large part because at the growth and development of the company in 1831, they hadn't added any serial numbers to the instruments. They got the bright idea to start going ahead and noting the vintage of the instrument by adding on serial numbers. So serial numbers exist from the 3000 series forward. This book also was great at answering why Heckel doesn't consecutively add in serial numbers in numerical order, like one, two, three, four. Instead, Heckel goes ahead and gives shifting numbers. This started in World War I economy. Heckel was seeing a decline of sales like many businesses. They started non-consecutively numbering the instruments so that buyers would not know that they were not having the large number of sales that they typically had prior to the wartime recession. So to this day, Heckel still does not have consecutive numbers on their instruments in order so that we, the customers, do not know the exact number of sales that they have per year. This book also explains the development of student model Heckel bassoons such as the Opus and the Crest. It explains that originally the Heckel student model instrument was named the Opus, but due to a conflict of interest with another musical company, they ended up changing the name to the Heckel Crest. So they do have student model instruments available. Now, I have to say that there was also a large amount of drama that the history from Heckel's perspective was finally established. Throughout much of bassoon folklore, there has been a story about the Con 8R bassoon and that the Con 8R bassoon was modeled after a Heckel 8000 series, specifically a couple of Heckel 8000 series. Now this legend begins because Con had a originally created the Strobicon in 1939. This newly developed technology was the electronic music tuner as we know it. Heckel wanted to have one of these in order to tune their instruments and there was an exchange through letters, which you can all read in the book, of exchanging two 8000 series Heckel bassoons for that of a Strobicon tuner. Now again, due to the wartime efforts and challenges, they were unable to solidify shipping two 8000 series Heckel bassoons for that of a Con Strobicon tuner. So from Heckel's perspective, this did not exist, but many who believe in the folklore, they do note that around that time period that Con did get a hold of four Heckel bassoons. It's just important to note that those Heckel bassoons supposedly did not come from the Heckel company, according to this book. Now, I do have to say that this book was a little bit challenging because it does not follow an exact timeline of events. Rather, it follows who owned the business, um, which family member, and then their major contributions. As part of that, I found it a little bit challenging because many times people would overlap and therefore the timeline was not consistent. For myself, I ended up taking notes and then putting them in consecutive order. And I thought that I would make that timeline of the notes that I took available to you. So I'm going to include that in a blog post and I will link that in the description box down below so that if you are studying for an examination on the history of the bassoon, as I know I did when I was in college, that will be a quick and easy reference resource to you so that as it is not following the exact timeline here, you have that available to you. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you don't want to miss a future video, be sure to click that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time. Bye.